everyone, welcome back to another video. It's currently quarter to seven, I'm about to head to the hospital and I thought I'd bring you guys along today and show you day in the life of a medical student from my end and in particular for me, general surgery. I'm currently on general surgery. I've been on general surgery for five weeks now. So I kind of know what the day to day is kind of like. And yeah, I thought I'd bring you guys along. Starting the day off by working with the phlebotomist for about an hour, hour and a half. This is kind of extra work. I don't really have to do this, but I think I mentioned in my GP video that I did quite a bit of bloods in, in GP and I don't really want to lose it. I want to keep it going. So I'm going to start the day off with that. I'm not driving right now, don't worry, but sometimes I don't really have time to drink my coffee in the morning. I do enjoy a nice coffee before I get my day going, so bring it in the car. So I live only a few minutes away from the hospital, and for mornings like this, pretty ideal. You can just wake up, roll over, and get right to it. Upstairs. All right, so good morning doing bloods. Was doing bloods for like an hour and a half, really good practice. Now I have a bedside tutorial. What that means is we basically go up to a patient with our tutor, do a history and exam and present the findings. And then we kind of just talk with the tutor and learn a lot about the case, whether that's investigations, treatment, that sort of thing. So touch base you guys after that. All right, so just wrapped up my bedside tutorial there. We actually ended up having two. I thought we were gonna have one, but two different patients, both middle-aged patients. First one uh, had cellulitis, which is a superficial skin infection, commonly causing pain and swelling and redness at the area of infection. And then we also had another patient with pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the pancreas commonly caused by gallstones and alcohol. So really informative, tutor was good and spent a lot of time with us working through each case and working on what investigations we do, treatment and all those sort of things. So really good. And now I have a lecture. Um, it's basically on to talk about our final exam, one of our final exams in data interpretation. So a lot of like x-ray and ECG type images and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go watch that right now. Hopefully I can get in a theater before lunchtime. If not, there's a teaching session at lunchtime with free food and that's at 12.30. So I'm gonna attend that and get some free food and, and, and hopefully learn a thing or two from that teaching session as well. So see you guys then. <laughs> All right guys, so I'm currently in the clinic in the hospital. I didn't really tell you guys about the free lunch I had and the teaching aspect of that. There's actually no teaching session this week. I don't know why there normally is, but no teaching session, just got a free lunch. So never complain about that, especially for a guy with a big appetite like me. Basically right after lunch, headed right to the clinic. This is not usually what I'd be doing on a typical day, but it happens to be a Thursday, which is when the team I'm assigned with goes into the outpatient department and does clinics. So all these patients don't have life-threatening um, emergencies and they're often referred by their GP to um, have a consultation with us. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. And it kind of reminds me a lot of the GP days. So being back in like a clinic setting, even though it's in the hospital. So that's what I'm up to now. It's been a good afternoon so far. I have a couple more patients, but check in with you after. All right, so it's currently 4.30 and just finished clinic. I was in there for about three hours actually. So good few amount of patients and, you know, good learning experience. I worked with the consultant today and a few of the other doctors. So they're really good having me in. I'm not gonna go through every single patient I had in terms of what they had specifically, but I think a good theme from what I had today was a lot of patients with abdominal pain 
and bleeding in the back passage. Now, there's quite a few causes of bleeding in the back passage, but in an older patient, you want to be concerned about, unfortunately, cancer of the bowel. And in younger patients, but also older patients, you have inflammatory disorders such as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, if anyone's ever heard of those. Those are just infl inflammatory disorders of the bowel hence the name inflammatory bowel disorders. So that, those are the kind of things you want to investigate. And there's certain things you can do like colonoscopies, taking a biopsy. So a colonoscopy being a camera that's inserted through the rectum into the bowel and you can kind of see the contents inside the bowel and then you can take biopsies of part of the colonic contents and test them. Um, for the various aspects of those disorders. We referred a couple patients for those. Um, a lot of stool sampling as well for blood in the stool, H. pylori, which is just a bug that can infect your stomach and could also be detected in the stool as well. And just looking for gross macroscopic changes in you know, normal stool. A couple patients had hemorrhoids, which are swollen veins in your anus or lower rectum. So that could be a cause of bleeding in the back passage as well. But I got the opportunity to take some histories from some patients as well and do some exams. In this case, being a lot of abdominal examinations, being that I'm in general surgery and also digital rectal exams. I also had a patient with a hernia. A hernia is a protrusion of internal organs through the wall that encompasses it. So in the case of my patient, it was the colon that was protruding through the abdominal wall. And for those, the big thing is you want to check whether they're reducible or irreducible. If they're reducible, they're able to be pushed back in. If they're irreducible, that means they cannot. And you want to look at surgical options in that kind of case. And lastly, I had a patient with basal cell carcinoma. She previously had a punch biopsy done on the lesion to check for cancer cells and it came back as cancerous. So that lesion needs to be excised or taken out under local anesthetic with significant margins to prevent it spreading to other areas of the body. So that wraps up my day in the hospital itself. I'm gonna go home on days after the hospital, I usually go home and study and it's a combination of study in the gym. So good solid 10 hours in there. So just finished my back workout. Didn't film too much of it, obviously, but you guys have seen my other fitness videos, so didn't want to bore you guys too much, but it's currently 7.30 and I'm just going to be studying for the rest of the night, but not really my film that, so I'm going to wrap up this video, but I just want to say thanks so much for watching and hope you enjoyed it and hope you have somewhat of a perspective of what it's like to be a third year medical student. And I know my experience may not be the same as someone else at another medical school or studying in another country, but hopefully, hopefully you have an idea nonetheless. And like I said, hopefully you enjoyed it. So signing off for now. I'll see you in the next one.